Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Finally. Yes. I'm just wondering, like I figured the girls would all be in mini skirts by now and the boys would be in shorts, but I guess you waited until the last minute to buy their outfits. That's good. We are here today, of course, to celebrate these children's first communion, reminding them how much God loves them and that we we'll talk to them a little later about all that they've learned and all that Jesus does for them. At this time, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have accomplished the work of human redemption, through the paschal mystery of your only begotten Son. Graciously grant that we, who confidently proclaim under sacramental signs the death and resurrection of Christ, may experience continued increase of your saving grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has prepared her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maid servants. She calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is naive turn in here. And anyone who lacks sense, I say, come, eat of my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also hand on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Following him, wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And he prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm gonna take a chance anyway, since you all have masks. Everybody has a program? No? No? All right, for those of you who do, turn to page two. A reading from the book of Proverbs. What is the first word? Wisdom. All right, that's enough except you can have the program for later. (laughs) Wisdom. Does anybody know what wisdom means? Anybody know what wisdom means? 
We have a brave soul back here. What do you say? Smart. smart. Okay, it's kind of smart. That's all right. Does anybody know what knowledge means? What does it mean to have knowledge? Smart. Same answer. Okay, come on. If I asked you, let's see, what color is healthy grass? Okay, so you know that. So that's knowledge. Okay. Now, if I told you to eat that grass, what would you tell me? No. See, wisdom tells you not to eat the grass. So that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge means we have facts, all sorts of facts, heads. And those are important. But wisdom is more important. But now, here, we have two kinds of knowledge. The kind of knowledge that's in books, that like scientists tell us and things like that. But what's the other kind of knowledge that we have? What is that called that's, that comes from Jesus? I'll give you a hint. It starts with the letter F. Faith. Faith. Grace. Very good. Faith. You see, we can't really prove things about faith. We have to believe them in our hearts. So what do we believe about the bread and the wine at Mass? They become the body and blood of Jesus. You're not going to be able to see it, and, and you'll be happy to know it won't taste like it either. It's still going to taste like bread, and if you were allowed to have the wine, it would taste like wine if you knew what wine tasted like. But we believe through faith, so the knowledge of faith tells us that it's going to become body and blood. And that's why we're really here today, right? We're here because we're going to receive Jesus for the first time. Okay, now, so you know you're here receive Jesus for the first time. But how about the wisdom part of that? Are you just here because you got to dress up nicely? And maybe you're going to have a party later? No. Why are you here? You're going to be here to, you know, to receive the Eucharist, right? But why? Okay, let me ask you another question. Did you ever hear the saying, you are what you eat? Your parents probably have. Did they ever tell you that? Who, who here had ice cream and chocolate cake for breakfast this morning? There's always one in the crowd. So why do you think your parents wouldn't want you to have ice cream and cake for breakfast? What was that? Give you a sugar rush. Okay, that's a good one. Or just in general, it's not healthy, right? Your parents want you to eat healthy foods so that you become healthy physically, right? So the reason we're here is to eat this spiritual food so that we become healthy spiritually. Did you do that to him? No? Okay, that's good. I couldn't imagine you doing anything like that, but just, you know. So we come here because we want to become like Jesus. Okay. So tell me some things about Jesus. Can you tell me something that, that why would you want to become like Jesus? What is something about Jesus that you would want to be like? Help people. Uh, make people better. Help make people better. What are some other things about Jesus? He sacrificed himself. That's a big thing, right? Anybody else? Is she being very shy today? Wow, I've never seen that before. It's... We want to be like Jesus and try to help other people. To try to help other people. Very good. So Jesus was really a nice guy, right? He was forgiving, and that's good because sometimes we make mistakes, right? And we have that wonderful sacrament that we did called reconciliation to kind of take care of those little mistakes and things, right? He was forgiving. He sacrificed himself. He was loving, kind, right? 
So we want to be all those things. But we also have to recognize that not everybody in the world is going to be like that, right? So sometimes we have to be patient with others. He was very patient. He's especially patient with me and Deacon Sonny and Deacon Peter, thankfully. Otherwise, I'd be in big trouble. What do you think, what other things do you think he did? Do you remember the story about the fish and the loaves? He fed the hungry. So in a sense, he liked to share things, right? He shared himself with others. So he wants us to do the same. But he also knew right from wrong. And sometimes we may think that by helping someone else is the right thing to do, but that's where wisdom comes in. Sometimes we have to use the wisdom to know. So, mommies and daddies probably tell you not to talk to strangers, right, okay? But now sometimes a stranger, did she say something else? No, Oh, okay. You were smiling, so I was wondering. But sometimes a stranger might think like, you know, they might say, oh, you know, could you help me with this and all that stuff? And it's hard sometimes to say no to somebody, but you have to do it sometimes. So what can we do if we can't really help somebody because we're not sure if we should? What can we always do for them? Pray. That's right. Jesus was very big on praying. He prayed to his father to know what he should do. Because remember, towards the end, he said, you know, I don't like this whole crucifixion thing. It doesn't sound very pleasant. But if that's what you want, and God really didn't want it. What he wanted Jesus to do was to just obey him, even if it meant that. Because why did that happen? Because people. People who didn't understand him, people who didn't like him, and that's why he ended up on the cross. So we have to be careful, and that's why we come here to become more like Jesus, and to have that kind of wisdom that helps us to know what's right and what's wrong. And that's important. And for the older people, you probably know the serenity prayer, right? And isn't that the hardest part? That last part, the wisdom to know what we can change and what we can't change. But you're too young for that. Just remember, keep learning. Be wise, but always trust. In who? Jesus. Okay. I don't know if it's the fact that we're in July now, or if it's just that they've waited so long that they'll like just get it over with. I now invite everyone to rise for the universal prayer. My brothers and sisters, through this common prayer, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, not only for ourselves and for our needs, but for all mankind. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Holy Church of God, that the Lord guide and protect it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the children receiving their first Holy Communion, we pray that with their families, they will continue to worship together and receive the spiritual nourishment and healing strength that comes from regular reception of the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those present here and all of those who could not be here today. May they know the love in our hearts that we have for all of them and may they share the peace of Christ now and forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in the armed forces, for all the people in the world, and for all our brothers and sisters in need. We pray that the Lord assist them and unite all in peace and harmony. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those in our family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church and grant us today what we ask you in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands and the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of this holy church. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May sharing at the heavenly table sanctify us, Lord, we pray, so that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be bound together through Christ our Lord. Amen. Deacon Sonny, did you want to say anything? Nope. I've never heard you say that before. Well, on behalf of Deacon Sonny and all the catechists, our musicians, Deacon Peter, I want to, uh, and especially the parents who are the primary educators of our children, um, thank you for doing a great job. Um, holding them off this long was probably not easy. Um, I'm glad that they all fit into their suits and dresses. It's a little strange, I know, doing it this way. Um, we will have communion for everyone else once Mass ends, but I hope everyone does have a good day and uh, we'll just keep praying. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. Thank Thanks be to God.
Families, we are going to take pictures up front in the sanctuary area. Um, we'll call you up one family at a time, okay? So if you have a family member who has a phone or a camera that you wish to have that picture taken, they should be in the middle. I'm going to move the table a little bit off to the side, and then we'll call you up one by one. First family on the left here. Come on up. Do you want to take pictures for your families? Come on over at this time. Name. No, you gotta spell it then. I can hear you. Paulina family? Amelia Paulina? Come on up. Amelia Paulino. You can take your mask off for the picture. Damasto family, Rachel Damasto. Oh yeah, go outside, take more pictures. You can definitely leave after receiving your picture. Take pictures outside, anywhere else on the grounds. Rachel Del Masto family. 